I'm the voice of Night Industry 2000's microprocessor, K-I-T-T for easy reference. It's all about Knight Rider when I have the pleasure of talking to Tony Hudson. Tony played the memorable role of Maxine Fleming in third season episode Night by a Nose. Back in the 80s, Tony also played parts in The A-Team, TJ Hooker and The Love Boat. Now, I haven't seen Tony talk that much about her time, her week, on uh, Night Rider, this episode was filmed in the beginning of October, back in 1984, so uh, more than 37 years ago. Uh, and I hope that uh, watching this episode with me will bring back some good memories for her. So enjoy this uh, conversation slash commentary uh, with Tony Hudson. Yeah, hi Tony. Hi, Jacob. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I am so delighted to have you here uh, with me today, watching, talking about uh, Night by a Nose, uh, the episode that uh, you uh, had your very big part in uh, back in 1984. It's uh, wonderful to see you, and I'm so happy to have this, uh, this opportunity. And I must say, you you look just like like yourself. <laughs> I'm I'm quite <laughs> impressed. <laughs> oh wow! Well, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, how you have accomplished to uh, to stay so young. You know, it's been almost 38 years, and and uh, yeah, uh, I don't think any of the viewers out there are in any doubt who you are. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I I uh, turned 61 in November. Not not shy about sharing my age because I took it as a very serious thing when I was younger. And so, yeah, it's paid off quite, quite a great deal. Yeah, yeah, oh, great. Um, now we're coming, uh, we're coming in a deep dive into this, uh, into this episode and watching just the, um, the intro right now. Um, and when this kicks off in a couple of seconds, um, this is with you uh, on the center stage. Um, you're riding a horse, um, being on grounds. Uh, um, I don't know how much you can talk and how much you can remember about uh, about the scene that, that we're going to watch here. I, I for sure enjoy it big time, you know, with uh, with Kit uh, racing, with a horse uh, racing, um, uh, two two black beauties uh, just uh, just uh, 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 yeah into the into the open. Um, uh, can you tell me how, how, how do you remember this, uh, uh, this scene and shooting this scene? Well, this scene was quite fun to do because I was on the horse for uh, a bit of it, but, but not as fast as my stunt double, who was Sherry Peterson. Sherry Peterson worked in the stunt world and actually doubled me in quite a few movies. We went to Washington, D.C. for a different film. But I brought her in because of the horse bit, and she was really good on horses. So a lot of the riding, I can let's watch. Okay, so that's me a little bit on the horse at my pace, but they made it match. That's Sherry Peterson. So they, they, they flipped in and out. Close-ups are more me. The wide was more Sherry because there's a fall. So they make sure that, yeah. Okay. But I'm not falling. Okay. <laughs> Um, you know, you, you must have read the script, and uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's like uh, this is not something for for an actor who uh, has never been on a horse. Uh, uh, had you done any horse riding a bit before? A little bit, yes. Uh, in in middle school, which is like 12, 13 years old, I lived in Santa Barbara, and a, a really good girlfriend of mine had horses up there, and so I was exposed to them then. And then um, I lied my way into a Japanese commercial with Dennis Weaver by saying I knew how to ride a horse, which was English posting, you know, like the, and uh, faked it and got the job. And uh, yeah, so just here and there, but I'm, I'm a coordinated athletic person. So I kind of can mimic something and learn quickly on the spot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
So uh, yeah, and we and we we uh, you know we uh, we see you on uh, on the horseback, and I must say I think it's it's uh, quite it's quite a good uh, good match with with your stunt uh, uh, double. Uh, because now, today it's not on a on a on a 21 uh, inch uh, TV tube. It's uh, it's on a big flat screen and in uh, high definition. Uh, and and I think it's it's actually quite difficult to see when it's you and when it's not you. It, it, I think it's you it's you on the horse up there, isn't it? That was that was me getting on the horse, yeah. definitely. And then and then when it's going fast and you can't really see my face and the head's going like that's me. That's me. You're going pretty then fast there. Goes, then it goes, and then it cuts away again. Yeah, yeah. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but Sherry Peterson, she doubled me, stunt doubled me in a movie called Prime Risk yeah. that I starred in that Clue Gulliger and um, uh, Timothy Bottoms and Lee Montgomery, really some really good actors from the past were in. But Sherry Peterson, yeah, she she doubled me there, and it was a lot. So that fall was Sherry. Yeah. And then when he turns me over, boom! Now that's now that's me. So that's me. When when he turned the girl over, it was me. But yeah. she fell, and it placed me in, and that's me. And I I don't know what happened to him. And now they I hear a gunshot. Oh my God, he's dead. Yeah, I th I, but, I think we get the one of the loudest screams on Knight Rider um, uh, and not often were, were people or things killed here so yeah that that that, that, that was something uh, Tony um, <laughs> Uh, and and also when when we get into the next part of uh, and and the next scene, uh, we can see that you are, yeah, you're, you're you're very sad and you're very emotional, uh, but still you're very confident. How, how did you prepare for um, uh, for that uh, role um, and, and 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 being in 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 that in that role? Uh, you know, it was it was quite easy because I I'm playing uh, Michael Knight's ex girlfriend. Really, they don't they don't play that up much. But because we had a relationship, I felt that they should be very comfortable around each other. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like I know him, he knows me, our rhythms, our our energy. So, but the idea that here he is now going to help me figure this out. Uh, you know, it, it it was it allowed me to be vulnerable in his presence because we had a past, yeah. but it also allowed me me to be confident at the same time because we had a past. I think that combination allowed her to play that play that line. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm So, and and how um, how was it? Now now we're going to see you acting uh, with uh, with David Hasselhoff. Um, did you know um, Night Rider uh, when when you came on the show? Um, did I know the show itself? Yeah. Yes, yes. Night Rider was a big, big, big show. Uh, wasn't this uh, Stephen J. Cannell as well? Yeah, yeah, I think so. yeah, 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 yeah. So, Stephen, so here's 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 the connection. See, Stephen J. Cannell knows me, knew me when he was alive, and was doing this show because I was married to. Dirk Benedict, who was Starbuck on Battlestar Galactica, and then on the A-Team, he was Face Man. So Stephen J. Cannell did uh, the A-Team. So uh, I already knew Stephen. And when you when you become part of that crowd, you know, they go, oh, yeah, no, no, Tony could do that. So they brought me in. I had to audition, but uh, they knew who I was already. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So and now uh, do, do you remember this uh, this scene? As as I when when uh, when I watched the episode, it looks as if you you, you didn't do much studio work. Uh, a lot of your scenes were were uh, were on site uh, on some 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 location. Yeah, this was the Equestrian Center in Burbank, California, not far from uh, Disney Studios out there, and uh, they use a lot of the Equestrian Center out there for movies. And that's where we shot this with the stables and and the track. 
So it was very close by. Yeah. So and, <laughs> Even and, how, we are and, and how did that work? Did the did, did, did the whole crew and 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 actors uh, move out there for a day, or, or did, did, did 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 you stay overnight for a couple of days? How did that work? Well, because Burbank is pretty much considered local, uh, in reference to the Studio Universal and all of that. So. Uh, you were hired, if you're hired local, then you're responsible for getting yourself there, you know, to the location when the locations are within a certain parameter. Yeah. So uh, if you're, in other words, working and living at home, they don't give you a daily money, which is called per diem to pay for your hotel and incidentals because you're at home. Uh, so yeah, you just get yourself there and to and from, uh, and then they feed you on set. So But this uh, equestrian center took maybe two, three days. We were out there for two, three days. We had stuff on the track, but just stuff in the stay at the stalls, um, and then a couple of so like two or three days yeah. that we would go out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just uh, we just saw the scene where you and and uh, and, and David uh, walks along the uh, the horse track, and and Kit is driving behind you. Um, do you remember anything about about that? Because yeah, it must uh, the, the car must have been as as we call it blind driven with a guy uh, sitting uh, yeah um, uh, and, and not being visible. Yeah, what was interesting a little bit of behind the scenes, you know. So the kit car obviously is a mystery to the people who watch the show, right? And uh, I'm an actor, and I'm in the business of making art and creating a visual that looks like one thing and maybe is another. So here I am on this show, but my husband at the time was on the A-team. So talk about stunts and faking it. And, you know, I mean, I know, I know how it works. So, and then I've been on so many other shows and movies. So by the time I'd get on here, it was so funny. So Michael, David Hasselhoff and I are sitting in the car waiting in between shots. We've got the walkie talkie, the big friggin' walkie talkie. So they can tell us to go in the kit car, you know, to drive. And while we're in there, you know, <laughs> bless his heart. He's trying to impress me with going to like Africa or Germany singing and the fans and how many people and what that feel, felt like. And, um, And then he finally asked a question <laughs> and I responded that uh, the only time I've ever experienced that was when my husband and I went to Germany, uh, Holland, I mean, Holland, and the A-team went and uh, it was the biggest turnout since the Beatles in 1956. So it was like, yeah, I'd experienced that big crowd thing. And then he goes, who are you married to? And then, then the conversation started to go, but so it just changed. Like yeah. he was trying to impress me at one point and then he realized Oh, I think she understands how this all works. Yeah. So, we became buds and it was really, it was easy. It was really easy to work with him. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we, uh, we so, also... So, so my point is the stunt driver who drove the car, I think I even knew the guy. Like so many of the stunt guys who worked on Knight Rider worked on the A-Team. They all kind of worked on a lot of the same show, especially of Cannell or Glenn Larson or somebody's, producing the show, they use the same kind of guys. Yeah. So, yeah. So I kind of knew, I, it wasn't a big surprise to me to have a car following me. It looked like it was no one in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, and, and you could you can say that that, that uh, uh, it, it was a big thing back uh, back in those days with with the abilities that uh, that kid had. Uh, and, and of course, also a huge part of, of the hit of the show, the, um, the um, yeah, um, The way yeah, well, they, it is uh, a character. Yeah, yeah, it is. Look, he he's having a scene with Kit right now. Yeah. He's talking to the Kit car, trying to get his betting tips, and he thinks the car is trying to just you know mess him up. But yeah. he thinks he's getting betting tips from a car talking car yeah. or a guy inside the car. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should talk. Uh, we should talk a bit about um, about how you got the role. You 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 have you have talked just a bit about it. Um, a, any more words on uh, on on what uh, went on in your life at that point? Um, how you got the role and and also w what it it meant for your career uh, uh, afterwards. Uh, well, I think it was Victoria Burroughs. I, I think she was was she the casting person. We'd have to look in the credits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there was a casting director who 
uh, you know, very, very familiar with me and my work because casting director's job is to keep their eye on the talent that's in Hollywood and they have them on their lists and, and certain types, you know, oh, someone needs a movie uh, filled with a character like this. Tony Hudson's in that category. Bring her in. So I, I, I knew the casting person, you know, Cannell was producing the, the Tish show, uh, you know. So it, it was just kind of an easy thing. I went in and uh, did the audition and just got the job. I mean, it was, I mean, I did audition, but it was a straight, just, they called me in, I auditioned. And it was just a one, one off. I didn't have a call back. They just hired, once I auditioned, they hired me. And that, that's unusual, but that's because they, of the relationships, I believe. So how did it work? Um, this was, I think, uh, I can't remember if it was eight or 10 days um, uh, of, of shooting schedule. Um, um, how, was, how was the shooting day for you? Um, uh, on some days you, you must have had a lot of scenes and other days may, maybe not, not as many scenes. Um, um, how was the working schedule uh, on, on set? Well, it's kind of, kind of easy to tell which days were longer than others for me. Because let's say, uh, like out on the racetrack, all that racetrack stuff, I had I have stuff on the racetrack. So when when the whole crew and the, everybody's moved to that location, then I'm mostly working those days because all of my scenes or a lot of them are on the racetrack, right? So that means that day or two I would work a lot. But then they move into. Um, you know, the hall, the other people's stables or the office of the vet or somebody. And I don't have a lot of scenes. So then I might not even work a day or two. I might, they call it, you're on hold or we'll notify. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because weather could change the location. In other words, you're not supposed to shoot today, uh, but they were going to shoot outside. Now it started raining. So now they're changing the schedule. They're going to move inside. So now you have to work today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so, so uh, a lot of changes could happen also because of, uh, because of weather related uh, stuff. Uh, no, absolutely. And you think you have a whole day off. You scheduled a lunch with your girlfriend. You said you'd call your mother and talk to her about such and such. And then in 30 minutes later, your will notify turns into, uh, you got to get here in an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what did you do then? Uh, uh, were you on set while not shooting? Did you uh, interact with uh, with uh, with others from from the cast and crew? Um, how how did that work? How was the whole relationship thing when when, when you're on a, a set for 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 eight or ten days like that? Uh, well, you know, depending what your interaction is with each cast member, like I don't think I worked with him. No, with with uh, it was Moha. Yeah, and more hard, except but maybe in passing in the whole episode, you know, like or and then so maybe I would see him at lunch. So say maybe he shot all morning, then lunch is served and my and I am brought in at lunchtime to shoot my scenes after lunch. So I can go to lunch, go to hair and makeup and shoot, but I'll overlap with him at lunch and go, oh, hey, <laughs> but we never work together or something like that. So that could happen, too. Yeah. yeah. But 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 you 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 had a you had a, uh, quite a lot of scenes with with David of course. Um, yes. Can you talk more about how how was the atmosphere on set and how was David? You know, it, yeah, you you we, we've already established that he uh, uh, he uh, he didn't have to to brag to you about anything. <laughs> he, he knew about it all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he was thinking like, you know, I mean, not everybody is married to a TV actor person and travels in the circles of, uh, you know, episodic TV or fans screaming for you. I mean, I've experienced it not personally like my ex-husband, but, you know, I've experienced what it feels like, sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so it, it made him actually more comfortable around me because... He didn't have to put on airs anymore. He could relax a little bit. And uh, we spent a lot of time in the kit car, hanging out, waiting. So there's a lot of conversation in between. Then the scenes that would come up later in the episode, which we'll get to when the fire happened. Yeah, we can see, we can see you now driving, driving in the kit car. Um... Yes, yeah, there's a lot of time. So even just that drive up, you know, we, we have to turn around, go back up, 
and set the car. We sit in. They have to adjust whatever they're adjusting. Then we get a walkie-talkie thing. Okay, ready? And action. But you have to hit a mark. Not only do you have to hit a mark with – I got my hair clippy in my hand. Not only do you have to <laughs> hit a mark with the car – but if there's a camera move that's supposed to come in as you're coming in and then see through the window to the front door of the vet thing, if that doesn't mark up, you got to do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so not everything easy in, in, uh, in one take. <laughs> yeah, and even though all it is is the car driving up and us getting out, it could take four times because there's a dance. There's a choreography of a dance with the camera people, the mark, the door, the guys showing up at the door as we – you know, it, it's a it's a dance. And so that's why they tend to hire the same people when they find a good crew, because they start to understand everybody secondhand. They don't have to say as much. They understand what people want. Yeah. So this is now where the fire is going to happen. Here. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we're, 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 we're trying to find information out. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we're distracted. We're distracting this veterinarian guys while I go snoop around in the stalls. Yeah, exactly. Was, yeah, looking through the files, really trying to find info, but also stalling so I can yeah. nose, nose around. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, another yelling from my character, Michael. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but you look, you look very comfortable uh, being, uh, being around horses. Um, yeah, you know, the, the trainers, uh, the, the handlers of these animals that are beautiful animals, a lot of these people worked on a team as well. I knew a lot of, a lot of them. Okay, and, okay. Um, but they, yes, they're so good at making actors feel comfortable and they're always very safe and showing you how, uh, to handle them. Yeah. I'm just enjoying the horses and, you know, they tell you which ones not to like go straight behind them. <laughs> So you don't get kicked. Everyone, every horse has its own personality. So, yeah. So here comes the, so during doing the fire thing, the fire thing took a two, three days okay. uh, of, of attempts because there's, well, no, two days. Maybe it was two solid good days Vet, inside the veterinary office and the fires because that's where the stables were. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, not, so now here comes, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> talk, yeah, no, it was. Uh, it was. Talk, talk, talk more about this scene because, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's quite dramatic. It was, real, it was real fire, and I was in there just a, a quarter of the way in. Of course, the way they shoot it and the angle, it looks like I'm more surrounded by fire than I actually am. But I was in the heat of things, and uh, let's see, let's see when I come running out. Well, when he runs in and saves me, I'm in there. He has to come get me. Yeah. Yeah. The blanket is coated with, you know, the anti-fire retardant stuff. So it's safety. And there's people all over with, you know, hydrants ready to, if they need to. Uh. But the fires are really just, you know, blocked by hay bales. And it's just a thing. It's not really on fire. It's like a torch that's, you know, and then they, then certain amounts of it get on fire. But, it's a controlled environment, even though it does not look that way. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so this is, very, yeah, so he wets it, which is the retardant, but you don't know that. And this thing, him going in and getting me. So, yeah, that's his stunt guy going through the fire. But this is, we're in there. Yeah. I mean, we're surrounded by hot flames. Yeah. Does, on at least three sides. Does, does, does David actually carry you? Is, is that you? That's you, me and David, yes. Yeah, yeah, great. So, uh, yeah, yeah, because it, was, when I watched it, I wasn't sure. Um, yeah, but it is. It no, is, we, it is we did that. It was, it was just the way they had everything uh, logistically staged that was safe enough for us to do. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Yeah. And I, th I think for, for, for the next uh, for the next scene, you 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 guys are are both in uh, in kit. Um, so, so how was that getting the car all wired up with cameras outside? Uh, uh, did you get in before all the cameras were put on and, and how, how did that work? Well, they're rigged so that, um, you can get in the door, you know, I mean, the, the way the rig is, is on the window door. So you can open the door and close it and the rig is still connected. Yeah. 
he's the one that they use. Uh, also, they're they're wide. They're like that one right there is through the front uh, windshield because you can see a slight reflection. Yeah, yeah. So that's in the, more of the hood of the car. So there's several different cameras, but they can't have the window camera when they're shooting me with the hood camera, right? They can't have that camera there because it would be seen right there. Yeah. So you have to do the scene with the hood cameras and then you got to do the scene with the, you know, the window cameras and then you get, so yeah. And then they cut it all together for their look. So this is still outside the car cameras. Now that's, that's a wide shot again, pulling in. Now they went back to the hood camera because of the reflection on the window, still the hood camera, but my side. So you got to do both sides. Yeah. Do, so do now you, we're discussing, uh huh? Yeah. Do, do you do you remember was that different kit cars? Um, because they they, they, they they must have been yeah, yeah uh, probably four, five, six uh, different different cars uh, for for a uh, uh, for an episode like like this. Um, and, and I love this character. I love yeah. this guy. Yeah, the, 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 this is a yeah a typical. Uh, uh, Do you know who his name is? Love him. He he was so funny. He was so good. Yes. Were, to answer your question, Jacob, there were several cars. I was aware of at least three or four uh, when I was around because there's the one that doesn't have anything in the dash. It doesn't have all the fancy stuff because it's not an interior car. It's an exterior car. Yeah. And that usually with the windows all blacked out and the guy, you know, behind the seat with the little, you know, mesh so that he can drive, you know, without being seen. So it's kind of, it's a bare floor, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so there's that card. Then there's the card that is the interior car where they shoot all the bubbles and the gadgets and the lights. Um, and, and it looks good when you shoot across, you know, my shoulder to him and that because you're still getting the interior of the car. So I think they call that more the hero car, yeah. the one that has all the fancy stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then there's the fast one that does the stunts, you know, that would jump or there's all sorts. Yes. Yeah. And we, we will also see that, that, that later you are, at least for a very short um, note, in, in one of the scenes where, where, where a lot of stunts are, are, are happening uh, in, in, yeah, um, with the cars. Um, uh, but we'll we'll uh, uh, we will uh, we will get to that, of course. Um, so, uh, how how much did did, did you um, uh, know about about the cars, uh, both in advance, but also how much did did, did you learn about it? Uh, I guess that, that that it wasn't for everyone just to get in the hero car. That that, that was uh, uh, probably uh, something for for David and and his uh, uh, his uh, yeah. Uh, um, partner in, 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 in the, in the scene, uh, only, um, um, how, do, how, right. how does that work? So, which would say the question again, um, how, how, how would work with the, with, with the different cars? If, 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 you, if you have any recollection about, uh, some of the cars you, you, you weren't able to, to go into and others, uh, were, 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 yeah, yeah. You, 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 yeah. You again, that's a, totally. Yes. I understand your question now. It, it just depended on what the car needed to be used for. Like right now, the windows are not tinted. You see that? And so sometimes, obviously, when Kit's trying to be private, all of a sudden it goes, and the, and the windows go dark and they're dark. Well, there's two different cars. Obviously, the window doesn't just go and turn black. <laughs> so, um, so there's two cars that have windows you can see through. So you want to see that it's David driving the car. You don't want Michael Knight in a car that has black windows because you don't know it's Michael Knight. So you got to have the windows open, like clear. So there's just that difference alone is a different car. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And so it just depends if if it's a car going fast from the exterior, zoom, it's, an, it's a blank car inside. They're just or just nothing fancy. And it's just the exterior, you know, and it depends. Does Do they need to see who's in there or not see who's in there? Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. So, Very convenient, by the way. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, do you have memories um, about? Uh, we, we've talked a bit about David, but but uh, memories of some of the other staff, uh, some of the other ac actors that that win this uh, this episode. Yes, the the who's the the, the female sidekick? 
Um, uh, Patricia McPherson. Yeah. Yes, I love Patricia. For some reason, her name was escaping my brain. Patricia McPherson and I uh, have run our careers in and out of each other for uh, a long time. So we kind of, you know, acquaintance knew each other when I was on the episode. And then years later, Louis Van Amstel, who was one of the pro dancers on Dancing with the Stars, had a local class in the San Fernando Valley uh, of ballroom dancing exercise. And uh, Patricia would go to this class. So I worked on Dancing with the Stars for 10 years and got to know Louie. And he's like, come to my class. So I go to the class. There's Patricia. And then she was part of the, would go to breakfast, every, you know, and then it was Denise Richards, Lisa Renna, um, Patricia McPherson, myself, uh, just Mary Margaret Humes, who was on um, Dawson's Creek. So we would all take Louise's class and go to breakfast afterwards. So I kept in contact a little bit with Patricia. Uh, other than that, I ran, I've run into David many, there's a picture of David Hasselhoff and I on the carpet, uh, uh, Golden Globes, red carpet. Uh, somewhere else I ran into him. Many times I ran into him and he's just very nice and says hello and yeah. Great, great. Um, maybe we can talk a bit about uh, also what you have been doing since uh, when, Night, when, when, when was Night Rider in your, in your um, uh, Hollywood career? We can call it that it was, because you, you, you did a lot of other things. So, uh, so, yeah. so tell us about it. Yeah, well, I've done just as many movies as I have done guest starring on an episodic of television. So I mostly started in the feature film arena and then uh, getting married, having babies, getting divorced, getting married, having babies, getting divorced makes you jump around from feature films to episodic TV to doing a commercial because your schedule shifts and what you're able to do and not do. So. Uh, yeah, I kind of kept working the whole time, but not like I was. And the episode of Knight Rider was early, early in my career, early, early in my career. Um, but it's, yeah, no, it was just early in my career. And then I went on to do many movies and uh, I just produced a movie last year, two years ago called Charlie's Christmas Wish that Lionsgate distributed and brought out last Christmas during COVID. We still have not received our theatrical release because of COVID, right? Yeah. But um, but yeah, that's just a family Christmas dog homeless veteran themed movie that's you know really sweet, and you can watch it on Pure Flix and uh, like Amazon Prime. But that's like my latest movie movie. But I just finished my third book which is called uh, Tinder Love, based on uh, fantasy dates from uh, being single. And uh, <laughs> my audio book came out last year, which is on the health food lifestyle that I've been living for over 45 years that my ex-husband, Dirk Benedict from the A-Team introduced me to. And so I have a company called Correct Living, and I teach people how to live a consciously proactive preventative lifestyle through food and I've been doing that for over 40 years, raised my children that way. I did not vaccinate them. They breastfed, they ate all the healthy foods. And yeah, that's how I've done it my whole life. And I know that's why at 61 that knock on wood, <laughs> you know, that uh, my health has been my wealth, definitely. And I'm, and I'm very proud of that choice. It's a commitment. Yeah. But it's definitely nice. so. It's a, so the health world is very big. I've invented a workout called Boogie Bands that I'll be bringing to market through a feature film that I wrote called Living on the Fringe. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So and then I want to turn the book Tinder Love into a television series. So um, and then I'm actually right now in the middle of editing and post production on a documentary called uh, My Journey with Joy. And about a gentleman's grief, losing his wife. She passed away and, and what he's been doing to get through it. It's a very interesting, unique story. So we're in the editing process of that documentary that I've directed and produced. So, so uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a constant creator. Uh, yeah, I see. I'm a conglomerate about to happen, Jacob. Yeah, <laughs> it's wonderful. And I'm, uh, yeah, I've also, I've also did... Uh, 
of course, a bit research before this, and I must say you you are very very active in in uh, in different uh, in different areas, and I, I must say I, I'm, I'm quite uh, I'm quite stunned that, that you can you can uh, you can do all that you do, uh, and and uh, and at the same time uh, be active as uh, as an actor and producer and and yeah everything you you are a writer and yeah um, so so a, a lot of uh, a lot of talents. Yeah, thank you. No, I, you know, I'm living more authentically, truly who I am as Tony Hudson than ever, yeah. ever before. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've just fallen in love again. And uh, it's quite lovely because I've been single for a good seven, eight years and enjoying it and really doing a lot of writing and creativity and and that's what I think about life. I think uh, I'm, I'm not going to be one who goes and retires. My life is about just creative contribution where it can affect one's life in a positive manner. That can come in many forms. I have an album of songs that I've written and recorded. I, I, so I write, sing, dance, act, produce. I'm like a, what do you call it? A mega threat. <laughs> So I, I imagine that 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 some of the lockdowns uh, through COVID have has haven't been uh, haven't been very uh, uh, very very good for you. It's been, it's been difficult to, uh, uh, no. to, to to not do anything or or, or how have you, no, just how have you the, coped just, through that? Just just the opposite for me. Okay. okay. You know, the the whole pandemic um, thing uh, m allowed me to go deep to dive down. here comes this uh whole stunt scene this yeah. took a minute this took a two-day thing to okay. shoot this. but no uh during the COVID thing i was allowed to take a deep dive and really discover who i was what i wanted to do and because the situation was a situation there's nobody around there telling me i can't start writing this or that or you know so I just started working on me and what I wanted and, and, and what I wanted to have my, be my legacy creatively. So I just really dug deep and uh, I grew a lot, not in size so much. As <laughs> <laughs> you look pretty much like yourself. As, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't gain the COVID-19. <laughs> no. A lot of people did. <laughs> right? They call, it, they call it the college 20 or something. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. I, did not, I did not gain the COVID-19. Um, no, in fact, I got stronger and in better shape. <laughs> I started doing different ways of exercising. I would go outside with sand weights on my ankles and on my hands. I'd put my music on or my motivational uh, people that I've come across and found during the COVID situation that just – it grew me from the inside out. Yeah. And I think, I think the, the whole pandemic thing was basically a universal pause button for everybody. Yeah. And it, and everyone responded differently and had a different reaction, but I think it allowed us all to go, okay, what's important to me. Yeah, Ex exactly. Exactly. To find out what's important. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, um, so it wasn't a hard time for me, actually. It was a, it was a blessing. Yeah. And obviously, it was slightly disguised at the beginning. <laughs> Didn't know it was a blessing, but became became, yeah. became quickly aware that it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's I think it's very difficult, uh, a, a different uh, from from person to person. Uh, some some people uh, n never really learned to navigate it, um, uh, and, and and others embraced it. And and found out more about what uh, what uh, the meaning of life is actually about. Well, yes, I mean the the whole balance, nature's balance is yin and yang, right? It's acid alkaline, it's sodium potassium. That's just nature. That's science. Talk about follow the friggin' science. I mean, that's what the whole thing is in nature. And if that's nature, and we can actually navigate that and understand it, then we're using nature to our benefit. But they hide the truth about nature because they want us to be, there's Patricia, they want us to be symptomatic uh, and, and reactionary instead of prevention and proactive. And so I'm all about a consciously proactive, preventative lifestyle instead of a reactionary one where you're doing your pack, backpedaling, trying to figure some shit out because you've just been eating whatever you want for 50 years, Yeah, you know? And uh, that's what a lot of people are doing. They're going, oh, man, I've been duped. 
I had no idea this was in that. I had no idea they were making me drink that and it had that in it. And I had no, I had no idea. Guess what? For 40 some odd years, I had the idea. I knew. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. why I changed my thing. Yeah. So uh, great. Yeah. We, we, we're yeah. Coming we're into, coming uh, into. Uh, I don't know why, why I can suddenly hear myself now. Um, so it's it's over. Okay, yeah, great. Um, yeah, we're 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 coming into uh, into the uh, yeah the end of the show now, uh, and and uh, you have uh, you have some uh, some scenes also also I think uh, um, stunt scenes. So we're going to talk about them in in, in uh, yeah uh, in a little time. Um, have you got any response um, from from working on Night Rider in the in yeah w when you did it and uh, in in the following years? Yes, I have a I have a fun story. It must have been let's no, there I am. Uh oh, uh oh. I hear I hear my horse. What? Yeah, that yeah, can't you do. Be, you do. That yeah. cannot be King Jack. King Jack. <laughs> King Jack. I think that's what I said. King Jack. Look, King Jack. Just take my glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. It's you. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, that, th these were easy. These were easy because it's just being happy. You know, I'm just being happy. Of course, then they come along. Yeah. Ruin yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. But how, how about the horse? You know, it, it, it's, it's not, it, it couldn't have been uh, just, uh, just everyday work. Uh, did, did, did the horse just do as it should? The horse is pretty solid. Yes. A couple of times, you know, uh, you get ready to shoot. The guys are walking up like that shot right there. I'm brushing the horse, but they're startled by the guys walking up. So, you know, but then again, those accidents, those are sometimes happy accidents. It makes the, the horse and the handler relationship more authentic yeah. because you're dealing with a horse, even though you didn't plan it. They go, oh, whoops, sorry, I just hit the computer. Let's keep it, you know, because that looks good. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm an Italian. I'm sorry. I'm I talk with my hands. Uh. Yeah. So, so he's, he's grabbing you pretty firmly there um, and, and uh, taking you away. Um, any any, yeah. any uh, memories from, uh, from this scene? And, yeah, you know what, what is happening next? Yeah, no, this this was um, out, yeah, way out in the, the Palmdale area, Highway 14, and a uh, pretty deserted area. So we were able to kind of take control of some big dirt roads and not have any interruption. But, yeah, because it was, uh, gosh, it's driving. The guy goes from the trailer to the car. The Yeah, then I have to let the horse out. There's a lot of timing issues, and it was shot in like three or four pieces. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as you as you can see, but this, yeah, a lot of screaming and uh, rescuing. Yeah, yeah. From yeah. many angles. Yeah, and, and a lot of a, a lot of I guess I guess stunt work also. Uh, yes, and, watching, yeah, just being there, watching him do it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, because you you were in, in the, you, you of course uh, at, at the end of it all you uh, you go you, you get out the you get the horse out from from the trailer but you're also in the car I think uh, when, when when a lot of action is taking place I don't know if, if David is actually on the on 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 top of the trailer at at that at that moment or or how it's uh, how it's uh, working. Yeah, you know good good question we're gonna have to watch this together Jacob yeah, and find yeah. out. Yeah, I, 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 can, I can see you, 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 you're squeezed in the middle of, uh, of, uh, of, of the front seat of, uh, of, of, the, of the car. Uh, yeah, we were going pretty fast, but it, but it was, uh, you know, really wide open desert area. So it was like not, I think it was maybe a, even a new highway out in Simi Valley now that I think about it. Okay. Yeah. Which is a, a pretty deserted, deserty area. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see where this. Ha yeah, it's kind of where there's no houses and nothing. Yeah. So now he's trying to haul ass to save me because I've been taken. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, that's not uh, any good in uh, in Michael Knight's uh, regard. So so yeah, yeah. We, we can see it now. Okay, with kid coming up uh, far in fast pace um, behind you. Oh yeah, they sped that up though. You can see that, right? The way that car comes around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, right. And I think, do I look behind? Do I see him? There's a there's a moment where I think. Yeah, he's uh, he's kind oh, of. Oh, he comes up alongside. I think yeah, that's. Yeah, right. we can see that. Then there's definitely a moment where you are, uh, where you are in the car, and, and a lot of uh, action is happening. We can see you're squeezed in. Mm -hmm. So he's, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but but did did uh, uh, did you see all this? We we have a car going uh, go, going. Uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah. No, I'm I'm present during all of the shooting of this. Okay, okay. So 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 you see how how they how they set up this whole um, uh, this whole scene. Oh yeah, no, the stunt guys are. I'll I'll tell you when I think it's David and when I think it's a stunt guy. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. obvious when it's David at times, but. Um, Let's see. And I forget who doubled David in this. Could have been Norman Howell. All right, so he's gone. He's yeah. toast. Yeah. So we now, got rid of him. Yeah. Now he comes to climb out the roof into the thing. Yeah. So obviously still David. Not David. Not David. Not David. Not David. Not David. David. Not David. David. Yeah. There you go. So, but we we also had a had a brief glimpse of you being uh, being in the car. Um, uh, do you remember for how long? Um, do you, you, you well, here we are. As well? yeah. yeah, no, this, this, this one, this whole battle went on for a while. See? I can't even remember. Okay, here I am trying to, trying to escape. Yeah, yeah. Get the horns. Yes. Yeah, the physicality of this, um, yeah, you get, sometimes you get bruises. <laughs> Unintentionally, only because you do it two or three times and they're grabbing the same arm in the same spot and you're trying to look authentic. So you pull away and yeah. they're trying to look authentic and hang on. And so inadvertently you do get, but the, but the, all this horse stuff, you know, the horse rearing up, that was all there when I was there. Yeah. 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 So how much did, 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 did you rehearse a scene like that? Um, Oh, here's now, here's the tail end of that. So, uh, so, you know, so when we, when we shot at the track, the beginning scene, uh, I just went and changed my shirt and we shot this scene okay. yeah. on the same day. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's at the beginning and the end, but yes. So just thought I'd throw that in because yeah. now I'm in the shirt. Yeah. I just changed wardrobe and then he showed up and they showed up. Yeah. Yeah. So you you you, uh, you actually do the last scene here with David. Uh, oh, sorry, with uh, with Edward and and Patricia as well. No, I uh, forgot. That's my only, pretty much my only scene with Edward was yeah. right there. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. And this guy thinks that's who the guy was inside the car, giving yeah. him the tips. Yeah. Hey, hey you, hey you. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with this? <laughs> Have you? We're uh, talking. <laughs> Huh? Have, have you watched uh, Have you watched the episode um, uh, since uh, a lot are are uh, because it, it's it's like you it, it's all coming back to you. It's it's wonderful having this this conversation because you yeah it's it's like it's like you remember everything from the time. <laughs> well, yes, actually, I put together a five minute. I call it a reel, R E E L, but it's really like a little mini movie of some of my work. But I. What I, the reason I made it was because uh, I had a big gap between my acting career being active. So I didn't have a lot of current work to put on a reel, right? My actor's reel. Yeah. So I said, but I have such a body of work. How do I make a current reel and let him, there's Glenn Larson. No, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't even friggin' Stephen Cannell. It's Glenn Larson. There you go. Um, and uh, so, but I looked through all my old footage often because I was using the old footage. So let's say, let's say I'm talking about past lives as Tony right now today. And I talk about being a horse owner. 
And it, as I say, horse owner, we cut to my scene in Night Rider on the horse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's supposed to be funny, like like the, the episodes and the movies that I was in is my fictitious past of becoming a woman. Yeah. yeah. So I made this little movie. And so, yeah, I did go through a lot of footage and I did see it not too long ago. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Long yeah. answer to a short question. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's fantastic. So, uh, um, yeah, we've uh, the, the episode is is uh, is over now. Um, uh, can you share some thoughts? And I know I've I've, I've uh, gotten in contact with you to to do this. Uh, what are your thoughts on being called on for a commentary like this uh, thirty years uh, later? Well, it's it's not the first and only um, thirty years later show or movie that I've been a part of that is celebrated, and I think it just. Uh, applauds, you know, the movies that can stand the test of time or the TV shows that can hold up uh, because, you know, we had 30 years not too long ago of just one of the guys, a movie I was in. It was a coming of age teenage flick and that they have a huge cult following just like Knight Rider does. And, uh, you know, yeah, a lot of, lot of oh, here's the beginning. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's it was such a it was such a great experience it really was and um you know it's like a little family the actors get to know each other oh yeah i worked with you on the coca-cola commercial and then you're on the episode of night rider they go oh, yeah we did that nike thing or you know you, it's like yeah, yeah. you kind of get to know each other yeah okay so but the fire the fire scene was the most intense yeah yeah i can imagine um also also the most time consuming um, yeah. and, and, and planning, yeah. planning for very little time actually working, but a lot of security, I mean, safety and planning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do, uh, do you remember uh, which uh, part of the stunt crew was, was in, in charge of that? Um, the fire people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It makes, yeah. Cause there's, there's, there's stunt people that do falls. Yeah. Right. There's stunt people who work with horses. There's some people that make sure that the fire situations are safe and accurate. Then there's the stunt people who don't really do the stunts, but they actually are in charge of the air mattress that you fall on and making sure that it's properly working. And so there's so many elements of the stunt world. And with my ex-husband being on the show called The A-Team, which was all about stunts, uh, we had almost every stunt guy that worked in Hollywood come through that show. So... I kind of knew a lot of the stunt people. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. great. Well, Tony, we're we're coming to uh, to an end now. I uh, have it's it's t uh, it's 2022. It's the 40th uh, anniversary of uh, of Night Rider. Um, I don't know if uh, if if you have any uh, any words to say to uh, to the fans of uh, of Night Rider. Oh, look at you freezing the frame on my name. Aren't you cute? That's awesome. Well, you know, it is it is a really, really sweet show that just became such a hit. The idea that this talking car, I mean, every little boy, but boys grow into men and men continue having their toys. And so the fact that there's a talking freaking car that can do all this great stuff and was saving the day. I mean, it's another little childhood hero situation. And uh, to be a part of TV history is really cool. I mean, I like being part of Hollywood in the positive sense because there's some really, really good people in Hollywood. There really are. Great. Okay. Um, and, and my website, TonyHudson.com, is just getting built and, and, and out there. But that's where you could find me if you wanted to read my audio book or find out what I'm doing and going on. So it's just the content's being built, but TonyHudson.com is definitely where you can keep track. Yeah, I, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll uh, urge all, all you Night Rider fans watching this to go there. Um, uh, it's a lot about lifestyle. And, and I think uh, compared to, at least to my lifestyle, uh, there's definitely some improvements that can be made. <laughs> Tony. Well, so, especially... So I was going to say, especially in the climate of the whole COVID thing, I mean, you know, we want to be strong and healthy and have immune systems. And I just chose to look at that a long time ago. I'm just ahead of the game. So I just like to share with what I know because it's, it's, it's been, um, no pun intended, a lifesaver.
Yeah, yeah. So uh, great. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna end the uh, the official part here. So uh, so thanks Tony for uh, for being uh, for being with us. Thanks for for this commentary. It's been uh, it's been fantastic uh, uh, talking to you. <laughs> Oh, thank you for having me, Jacob. Really, I'm glad we finally connected. I know I, I kind of, uh, I've been moving around. We moved from Georgia back to California, so I got a little crazy, but now we got it figured out. It's fantastic. Thanks so much. Yes, thank you. And, and, and bye to the Knight Rider fans. <laughs> yes, goodbye, Knight Rider fans. What was my name in this show? Um, it was Maxine Fleming. Maxine Fleming says, yeah, it was. yeah, yeah. Hanging so, out. Maxine yeah. Fleming, my horse was, uh, yeah. The King Jack, yeah. So, King uh, Jack. oh, a quick, cute, quick little story, real quick. So, I'm married to Dirk Benedict. He's shooting a two hour episode on a cruise ship in Mexico, and the whole A team, we're shooting A team. And I, so, I'm on the ship for the whole thing. And I'm going to get lunch. And I walk through a little doorway, and a little eight year old kid looks up to me and he goes, how's King Jack? <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> I said, are you serious? He recognized me from this episode yeah. 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 and and yeah. asked me how my horse was by name. Yeah. That was something. That is impressive. Yeah, yeah.